So it is 301. So I'll go ahead and get us started for this afternoon. Welcome. This training is being recorded. Um, you can drop questions in the chat box as they come up or feel free to come off of mute and ask as you need to. Uh, just a little bit of housekeeping. Just take a minute and make sure that your name is displayed correctly on your Zoom screen. Um, and if you would not mind taking a moment to dropping your name, position, and district in the chat so that others know who is here, that would be great. Thank you very much. All right. So today we're going to be talking about the summary of performance. Um, and we'll start off by introducing our team. So I am Carly Thibodeau. I joined the team in July, and before that, I was a teacher for 21 years. And with me here today, I have Colette Sullivan. Colette. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Colette Sullivan. I am the Federal Programs Coordinator, and I was also a special ed teacher for a very long time before I joined the department. And Leora. Hi, everyone. I'm Leora Byrus. Um, I joined the department four and a half years ago. Um, and prior to that, I was also a special education teacher. Thank you. And Julie? Hi, I'm Julie Pelletier. I've been with the department for about six years. Um, I'm the admin support for this great team. And um, prior to joining the DOE, I was a um, admin support at a K-5 elementary school for 16 years. Thank you. And I skipped over Jennifer because I think she is not with us this afternoon. Um, so Jennifer is another member of our team, Jennifer Gleason. And um, here is our contact information. If you need to get in touch with any of us, we do our best to get back to you within a day or so. Um, I am also going to drop into chat the link to this PowerPoint with note space. Um, if you are able to print that off or download or use that link, you can use that. Um, let's see what else. Oh, and we have our this is um, a newsletter that our team is putting out quarterly. And so if you would like to sign up to receive that quarterly newsletter, you can go ahead and use this link or QR code to enter your email to get that sent to you. <clears throat> Here is a copy or a link rather to the procedural manual, which has all of the special ed forms and with instructions, directions and examples and a link to MUSER, the Maine Unified Special Ed Regulations. So as I said before, we we're going to be talking about the summary of performance form today. Um, so here is the citation to MUSER and a snapshot of the um, requirements of that summary of performance. So it is an IDEA requirement. Um, and you can see that it states here that it's for a child whose eligibility under this part terminates. And Maine has identified that that termination is due to graduation from secondary school with a regular diploma or due to exceeding the age eligibility for FAPE. Um, and an SAU shall provide the child with a summary of the child's academic achievement and functional performance, which shall include recommendations on how to assist the child in meeting the child's post-secondary goals. So this is the reason behind why the summary of performance form is necessary. And we're going to jump right in. Um, a lot of this information does come directly from the procedural manual um, where you'll find the summary of performance on page 82. Okay, so we start off with um, the reason that this form is used and it's to provide that information and recommendations designed to assist the child after graduating or aging out as it was stated in MUSER. And this is a required document under IDEA. Um, so just some things to note on the summary of performance form when you're filling it out, that very first section, remember to document that date given to the child. So this should be before their exit from high school, either because of graduation or their exit date. And um, there's just a note here that is also stated in the procedural manual that it is suggested practice that you notify the child um, of at the age of majority that the SAU will continue to send paperwork to their parent or guardian unless the child 
asks for them to stop doing that. So that's just a little piece of information. Um, and these are the directions for the summary of performance form. So it must be completed during the final year of high school for the child. Um, and it should be written in a way that is useful for the child. It really should be child-friendly or student-friendly language. Um, and make sure to include the most current information available and use statements that are positive and supportive of the child's post-secondary goals. Um, this would be around their education, training, or employment going forward after high school. Um, and reviewing this document with the child is suggested, uh, and it really should be inclusive of them and having them be part of this process. All right, so jumping into section one of the summary performance, uh, and feel free, let me say again, just if you have questions, just feel free to come off mute or drop them in the chat box as they come up. If I'm going too fast, just say, hey, slow down, say that again. <clears throat> Otherwise, I'll just keep going. So section one is about the summary of academic achievement. Um, so this information here talks about how in this section one, you should specifically discuss the child's current level of academic performance and really summarizing both the strengths and the needs of the child. And this list here, this little checklist that's in section one is are things that you could include in section one, but it's not limited to these. You could obviously include other things that are not listed here. So these are just some ideas. Um, but you can see that must include data is underlined because that from a monitoring standpoint, when we look at the summary of performance for compliance, that is one of the requirements for the form is that section one includes data around those academic achievements for the child. All right. And you can see there the last thing says use student friendly language. Um, they really should know their strengths and weaknesses. All right, moving on to section two. This is the summary of functional performance. And so in this section, you want to list information um, that is included in the child's IEP around their present level of functional performance. Uh, and again, this is a list within section two that is includes some ideas of things that you could list in section two or talk about in section two. However, it's not limited to this. You could include other things under the functional performance section. So um, some examples are their general ability to problem solve, their attention and executive functioning, anything if their IEP called for social work, include information about that. Any of those extra related service providers could include information here. Um, any extracurricular activities that they've been involved in or have participated in. Um, and then anything about their independent living skills could go here also. So this is just a pretty extensive list, but as I said, you could include more or other things. All right, and we're moving right through this. So then section three, we get into the recommendations um, to assist the child in meeting post-secondary goals. And this section three is broken up into education, employment, training, and independent living is optional. Um, so this is just the first section of the first part of section three, which is talking about education. <clears throat> and so in each section, the procedural manual talks about recommendations for the child action. So these are things that are recommended that the child could work on, such as consider completing C. Oh, I, that's a typo. It's not CAN training, it's CNA training. I apologize for that. Um, at a nursing home or complete situational assessment funded by, by VOC Rehab. So these are some things that the child could do um, towards continuing their education or um, recommendations towards going on for their education. But then there are also lists or um, suggestions of things that could be discussed in this section around accommodations for the child. 
And so they may need accommodations to participate in the general ed curriculum. And many of these can be transferable to post-secondary, the post-secondary setting. And so again, all of these lists are including these things, but aren't limited to these things. So there are some things here listed. You could think about the curriculum accommodations, such as providing audio tapes of textbooks, um, and then many other things. And then there are also environmental accommodations that you could discuss here, uh, such as providing a computer for written work or providing a separate workspace. Um, and then there are also time or transition accommodations, uh, providing that additional time to complete tasks. So if these are things that the student used when while they were in school, uh, you know, in high school, then this these could be things that are recommended going on to post-secondary. Right. Then the ne next part of section three is around recommendations for employment. So again, you can think about recommendations for the child action. So some things that the child may do, such as staying in touch with the voc rehab counselor to obtain help with new or additional employment. And there are some other things listed there. And then there are also accommodations that may be appropriate for employment. So just as there was for education, think about those accommodations that the child had that may assist them in going forward in their post-secondary in terms of employment, such as checking in with time management and organization needs, or um, providing step-by-step -step instructions, those sorts of things, anything that could enhance their participation in employment. All right, and then another section of this is training. So thinking about those recommendations for training. So again, recommendations for the child action, um, some examples are consider completing a customer service course or taking adult education courses to support vocational training. Um, and then those accommodations that may have been part of the IEP in high school and that they may be able to take forward with them that would assist them with training, such as providing those step-by-step -step instructions or providing visual aids or things like that. And then finally, and this one is optional, as it states directly on the form, um, are the independent living skills. So again, these are recommendations for the child action, and these are some things that you can, can include, but there are others that could go here also. So some things that they listed in the procedural manual are continuing to improve budget skills, or um, review home safety plan, or seek support for medical appointments. I'm just kind of picking a few off of this list here. Um, but again, just to give you some idea of what you could include in these different sections on the summary of performance. All right, and it was pretty quick because a su summary of performance is not a huge form. Um, it's really about having that discussion with that child and making sure that they have some recommendations and information to take to their post-secondary. So any questions before I move on to the last little bit? I don't see anything in chat box, but. Okay, then I'm gonna move on. We do have just a quick little review thought I'd throw in a little quiz to keep it interesting. So um, this is section one, just section one, one of the summary of performance where that summary of academic achievement goes. So this says that Gus has made academic improvements each year at Pretend High School. His ability to grasp concepts, focus on assigned work and seek assistance when he needs help have all improved. Gus has also improved his reading and writing skills. So tell us in the chat box why this is not compliant. Because there was one important piece about section one that should be included. Yes, very good, thank you. So this is, there's no data in this section one. So just remember section one must include data. <clears throat> so instead it says the same thing, but 
We have some Wyatt scores listed for reading fluency, reading comprehension, and written expression. And we also have some report card grades. So you can say all those things about Gus that you want to, um, but just make sure that you include data points along with those nice things that you say about them. All right. And just another little reminder for that summary of performance, make sure there are no blank boxes or areas on the form in that section one must include data. Any questions? Was that Gus that we heard playing with his toy <laughs> just a moment ago? Okay, so you did hear the squeaky squeak in the background. I did, but it was adorable. Like everybody <laughs> loves that stuff. Come on. Yeah. yeah, I actually think it was Gracie. So, okay. Uh, yes, it could have been Gus. I have no idea. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. So, if there are no questions, I'm going to just move on. All right, this is our professional um, learning feedback and contact our form. So if you fill out a few questions, we appreciate the feedback. And then you'll be asked to select today's training and you can fill in your email address to receive a contact hour certificate for today. Um, and you'll also get a copy of this PowerPoint email to you along with the procedural manual, Muser, a copy of our office hours and um, our IEP quick reference document. And if I could figure out how to, I'm not gonna be able to do it. I can't get to my link. It's hidden behind my screens somewhere. So I apologize for that. Usually I drop it in chat, but I'm a little stuck. So we'll have to, hopefully you can the link. I was gonna say, can people get it from the QR code on the computer? Yeah, people are nodding. Thank you, Tanya. Please. Thank you, Lise. Great. All right, great, thank you. All right, so, and then these are our resources that we just give everyone links to. We've got the professional development calendar and we have the link to previous recordings and PowerPoints um, and then links to other resources, laws and regulations and forms and reporting. And thank you so much for joining us today to go over that summary of performance form. We appreciate it. And does anybody need me to go back to the professional learning link or are you guys all set? I think everybody's all set. Oh, Titus did join us. Titus, was there anything that you wanted to add before I end? Not to put you on the spot or anything, but. Oh, put her on the spot, it's good for <laughs> Hey everyone, sorry I got pulled into a meeting and I just couldn't get out in time. Um, summary of performance. This is this is really um, the best and the last piece of support our students have before they leave us. This is where all the adult services and community providers. This document is what's going to show these providers how they can support our students. So it's not just about compliance. It is making sure that information around their health needs are available. Doctors, um, doctors' names, telephone numbers. Um, so looking at that uh, health transition piece, looking at of the, not only the accommodations, but you know what your students' triggers are. You know um, how, um, how to engage them. If there's a certain word or routine that helps them uh, refocus, all these little things matter because you know your student. And now they're going out in the big bad world and it's only this piece of support that they have to be able to communicate if they are not able to verbalize or, you know, many of them high anxiety or just nervous little kids, right? Because they're still little kids, even though they just graduated. So any piece that you can share that will help them transition in um, 
training, um, education, whether it is independent living, whether it is employment, whatever those little pieces of information is that can really um, help them advocate for themselves when they are not able to verbalize it. Is what I got. Is that okay, Colette, Leora, and Carly for throwing me on the spot? <laughs> that was Thank Perfect. you so much. Uh, if you have any questions, guys, you know how to reach me. Um, and a recording of the session will be available as well as a PDF. And if you have, guys have any questions, you know how to reach me or the 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 other team, the other part of me. So on on the Yazi team, okay. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank you. All right, great. Thank you all for joining us. Have a great afternoon.